Hey everyone, welcome back to another video over the Wreath Network on TryHackMe. Today we're going to be taking a look at Task 29, Command and Control of the Git Server. Time to put this all into practice. Now, one thing you may have noticed, I have actually gone through and I had to redo a couple things for this. Um, I had previously shot this task video and uh, unfortunately I did not have this work for me. This next section is optional. Um, if you don't have any luck with it, just follow along with me. Just watch me do it. It's, uh, this can be just a little bit finicky because the it should be hop listener sometimes just really doesn't like to behave. Um, one thing to keep in mind. So as you're going through this, you may encounter a few issues. So a couple things I want to mention, um, you need to make sure first and foremost that you have the port consistent between, uh, what you're using here. And the one that you set up on task 20 with the firewall command that we did on the Git server. Um, I did not have that consistent. I was using a different port. I used uh, 16,000 and I uh, tried to use 17,000 in this. So I had to redo my hop listener. Um, and then I, uh, so I changed the port to 17,000 on there. And I redid the firewall command to have it uh, open up 17,000 because it was not able to call back. So just be aware of that. Um, you need to make sure that the hop listener is configured to listen on the uh, host that we've already compromised. So the actual um, web server. So that's dot 20. Make sure that you've got it configured on that. Make sure that the port is consistent with that as well for what you set up for the firewall command. Uh, and then make sure that the actual PHP file server is, you know, receiving things. Um, with the PHP file server, I think we're going to set that up in this task. Um... There we go. You can remove this little bit at the end, and I'll talk about this as we get down here to actually verify that it's receiving things. <clears throat> and I'll show you how I've got this all set up as well. If this doesn't work for you, don't be too upset. This is just something that as long as you understand what's going on, that's the important thing. All right, so you should have already have an HTTP hop listener started in either Empire or Starkiller, which we can see that I've got right here. So I made that here. I made a brand new listener uh, that's just a standard HTTP listener for Git server. And then I've made sure that all of my settings here are correct and consistent with that firewall rule that I put in place. Again, if you have issues with that, jump back to task 20 and you can get that firewall command that you need to run on the uh, Git server. Uh, so if you don't do this, take the opportunity to start one before continuing. Uh, with the listener started, there are two things we must do before we can get an agent back from the Git server. One, we need to generate an appropriate staging for the target, which I've gone ahead and done here. And then two, we must put the HTTP underscore hot files into position on dot 200 and start a web server to serve the files on the port we selected during the listener creation. Again, it needs to be able to uh, get through the firewall. So just be aware of that. The server must be able to execute PHP. Uh, so a PHP debug server is ideal. Uh, so let's start with creating a stager. For this, we'll use the multi uh, forward slash launcher stager. We already covered how to create stagers back in task 26. So you should be able to do this relatively unguided. The only option that needs to be sent here is the listener option, which needs to be the name of the HTTP underscore hop listener we created in the previous task. So we can create this stager. Make sure that you, when you are creating it, that uh, you select it to call back to the HTTP hop listener. In my case, I've just named it HTTP underscore hop. That is okay. You can do the same thing. Just make sure you have it selected to call back to this one. Um, and then again, when we created this, uh, you need to manually type this in. There will not be a drop down bar for the actual Git server uh, listener, or whatever HTTP listener you want it to call back to. So make sure you type that correctly. All right, so we've gone ahead and done that. You can see how Mirland has set that up in here. And you can see an example. We've started that, uh, and it will have generated the um, stager code that we are going to need. And you can do the same thing in Starkiller, which is how I'm doing it. If using the Empire CLI, you will be presented with a payload. You can copy and paste into the target's command line. Uh, you can just do this. I'm going to do it with Burp Suite here in just a moment. Um, real quick, let me go ahead, um, and we can go to the hop uh, item. So we'll do this in a moment. We can't do it yet because we don't have our PHP server running. Uh, now let's get that jump server set up. So this is the actual PHP server. First of all, in the temp directory of the compromised web server, 
create and enter a directory called hop dash username. So I've gone ahead and done that. So you can see I'm in hop dash dark and you can see in this specific case, I've gone ahead and I'm running the server. Uh, so with this, you will need to go into your temp directory on your attack machine and you will go to HTTP underscore hop in the temp directory. And then you need to zip this up. So use this command and let me go ahead. I'll go here. You can see that I have uh, everything here in this HTTP hop. Uh, mine's named to redo because I had to do this a couple times. Um, but if you zip it up, you have this hop directory and then you can start a Python web server. Um, and then we can just go ahead and uh, do curl to grab the hop.zip and unzip it. And then we should be ready to go, or at least for starting the PHP server. So we can unzip that and you can see that we just have these files here. So I have unzipped that hop.zip right here in my hop dash dark directory. So we've got all those files. Make sure that this completes without errors. If you have errors here, you need to redo it. Uh, specifically, you probably should just recreate your um, stager in this case, or the uh, hop listener rather. Sometimes um, the zip file will not uh, successfully zip up. So that's just something to be aware of. So we can unzip that. You can see that this is here. Uh, make sure that it matches everything. You have all these files. Uh, we now need to actually serve the files on the port we chose when generating the hop or HTTP underscore hop listener in test 28. Fortunately, we know that this server has PHP installed as it serves as the backend to the main website. This means that we can use the PHP development web server to serve our files. The syntax for this is as follows. So you can see that I've started this over here with PHP dash capital S 0000, listen all interfaces. And then I specified the port that I'm using. Again, make sure this matches up with what you have specified for both your listener, the stager, and the actual firewall command. If those don't all match up, you're going to have a bad time. So make sure that you check that first. That's probably where you need to troubleshoot first uh, because that's what I ended up having issues with, specifically the firewall rule. Um, so make sure that you have that. In this specific case, I recommend leaving off this last bit because you can see if it's actually sending and receiving data. This is just to make it clean and pretty. We don't really care about that. I uh, just leave it off. As shown in the screenshot, the web server is now listening in the background on the chosen port of uh, 47,000 in the case of what Mira's doing. We now have everything we need to get the show on the road. But the reverse show we received way back in past uh, 19 and our evil winner um, uh, Let me go ahead and jump over here because I can't see the entire task in there because I'm zoomed in. Uh, they both have access to run PowerShell. Uh, let me go ahead and pull this up. Uh, da, 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 da. Already running in PowerShell, so we need to adapt the stager generated for us by Empire in order to use them. It is Instead, it is easier to use it uh, with the web, share, or web shell we originally used to compromise the machine, so just pasting it in. Uh, the stager is the value of the A parameter in curl or burp suite. Remember, to, yeah, you were all in code the stager first. So let's do that. I'm going to do this with Burp Suite because that's far, far easier. And I've still got my Burp Suite session open. Uh, so I can go in here and we can click the paperclip to copy this to our clipboard. And in this case, I've gone ahead and already pasted this in as my A value. Make sure you use Control U to you were all in code this entire thing. Otherwise, it will not work. And we can go ahead and go to Agents and. Let's see if we can get another one back. So I've sent that request. We'll give it a moment. Sometimes this can just take a second. So I will go ahead and pause this. And when we are back, uh, I will have the agent, hopefully. All right, we're back. All I needed to do was click outside of the agents into the stagers and back over here. And we can see that I've got my agent back. Uh, sometimes this can be unresponsive, so don't worry too much about this. This next section is mostly for demonstration and so that you understand how to do this in practice. Uh, one thing to be aware of, I had to up my network time at this point, so just keep that in mind. You might need to up yours so it doesn't expire on you. Uh, so we've got our agent back, and we've successfully completed um, setting up our jump server. So we'll go ahead. Uh, so bearing this in mind, get an agent back from the Git server. We can go ahead and mark that as complete. And that is going to do it for this video. And next time I'm going to, we'll go over na uh, task 30. Uh, but until then, happy hacking.